I think it's from, let's say, 68, mm, the turn between the 60s and the 70s with all this consciousness of what the world was. And the, it's true for painting with Warhol and all these things. And it's true for fashion because for the first time, fashion was not coming from the fashion artists. Because till the end of the 60s, you were obliged of following following because in the shops, even in the cheap uh, shops, you couldn't find anything disconnected from fashion. When the first miniskirt arrived, any girls must, you had to have it. It took two years for my mother, but she had it at the end. <laughs> the whole concept of vulgarity, whether it be mutton dressed as lamb or whatever, um, I think I became very interested in when I was at college this is in 1976, 1977. What I was fascinated by, and this was at the height of punk, was looking through old Vogues where there was Barbara Golan standing in a certain way. And I realized that the archness of her pose was actually very similar to the archness of Johnny Rotten's pose. And the two things were about judgment and about what was deemed vulgar and what was deemed not vulgar. Johnny Rotten would have considered that somebody wearing Kenzo was incredibly vulgar, but it was just a different point of view. But I think that's why I sort of became interested in that sort of 50s mannerisms, especially of British couture, and of slightly second-rate British couturiers, people like Victor Stiebel or um, Elspeth Sean Communal at Worth, you know, people who were not Hardy Amys or Hartnell, um, because their work was very much about taste and being correctly dressed. They were reinterpreting that late 50, that, that sorry, mid 50s ideal of Dior and of gracefulness and of propriety that you saw everywhere from, um, you know, the salon, the grey salons of Christian Dior in Paris to those dresses being used in an infomercial on colour TV for Cadillac cars in 1957 in America. I think the uh, vulgar and beauty are incredibly related to each other because at the end it's uh, uh, the same thing. It has, uh, it's uh, a different name and one sounds nicer than the other one, but at the end it's something which is completely related to each other. And, um, and, and I think the vulgar is really part also of, of uh, um, how beauty is changing all the time. And, and sometimes we call something vulgar, but that 10 years later, it's, it's, it's beautiful. So that's also the continuous uh, changement in the world, in, in fashion, in how people are uh, seeing things. And, uh, and that makes it so yeah, interesting.